Random variables and probability distributions is the new chapter which we are going to discuss for the session. Now the concept of random variables has come into existence and before we start with this, let's try to understand that in science or the group of sciences, we conduct many experiments, especially in physics. We have so many experiments where we examine the data and finally we conclude with some value where the whole experiment depends on that value or the outcome of the experiment is totally decided on the value we obtain as in case of many experiments we conduct. Similarly, probability also is about an experiment or a random experiment. Say for example, I take a coin and toss it. When I toss a coin, say, 20 times and I get 11 times the tail. So I conduct an experiment until and unless I toss the coin 20 times continuously where until and unless I get 11 times tails. If I get 11 tails, then my experiment is done. So this kind of repetitive experiment to, in order to get 11 tails in 20 attempts of tossing a coin is totally based on the random variables. This is how we come across with introducing the concept of random variable comes into existence in case of these kind of problems. So let's see how we define the random variables and come out with understanding the random variables and probability distributions connected with the daily experiments. Bernoulli trial. Let's see what is Bernoulli trial. Now, if I conduct an experiment And I expect two possible outcomes by conducting an experiment. If I have two possible outcomes, where one outcome is called success and the other outcome is called failure, then such an experiment is called Bernoulli trial. So an experiment in which we have two possible outcomes, one is success and one is failure is called Bernoulli trial. So in this, the probability of success and probability of failure are very much connected. Say for example, getting an head When a coin is tossed. So in the in case of this problem we know that when I have a coin tossed the two possibilities are I get a head or a tail. So this is purely an experiment which is called a Bernoulli trial because tossing of a coin has two contents one is success and failure but because I want to get a head this is considered as success and the way and the toss in which I don't get a head or a tail is said to be a failure trial. So whenever I get a tail, it's a failure trial and whenever I get a head, it is a success trial. This is how I differentiate between success and failure for a tossing of a coin. Bernoulli trial connected with tossing of a coin. So basically, we define Bernoulli trial as an experiment which has two possible outcomes and generally the two possible outcomes are said to be success and probability of success and probability of failure is how we see the two outcomes. One is success and one is failure. So let's see the relation between probability of success and probability of failure. Now that we have defined a Bernoulli trial and its two outcomes being success and failure, 
Now next comes on how we relate the probability of success and probability of failure. So in a Bernoulli trial, if P is probability of success, if I denote the probability of success with P, and Q is denoted for probability of failure, of failure, then that implies probability of success plus probability of failure is always equal to 1, as how we understand the relation between probability of success and probability of failure will, al will always sum up to be 1. Or you can say P is 1 minus Q or Q is 1 minus P. That's how we understand the relation between P and Q, the probability of success and probability of failure of a Bernoulli trial. So let's take a simple experiment to understand with a problem on how we can connect the relation between probability of success and probability of failure. Say, the question is, find the probability of not getting a 3 on the top surface when a die is rolled. Is how we have the question. So let's connect this with the probability of success and failure connected here. So if I have the question which says find the probability of not getting a 3 on the top surface when a die is rolled, I see that the event is rolling a die with the intention that I should not get 3 on the top surface. So what would be the probability? So if P is probability of getting a 3 that implies Q is probability of not getting a 3 because this is success of getting a 3 and Q is a failure of not getting a 3 and Q is probability of not getting a 3. So in this case P relates to success and Q relates to failure. So the question is about probability of the failure which I need to find here. Therefore I clearly have P is probability of getting a 3 is 1 over 6 which I can find and therefore Q is P minus or 1 minus P which I have from the relation between probability of success and failure and therefore P equal to this implies Q equal to this 1 over 6 6 minus 1 by 6 is 5 over 6 therefore Q is 5 over 6 implies probability that implies probability of not getting a 3 on the top surface of a die when it is rolled is this. So chances of not getting a 3 on the top surface is a probability of failure which is 5 over 6 where probability of success is 1 over 6. That is the chances of not getting a 3 is more than chances of getting a 3.
So therefore, this is how we estimate the relation between the success and failure. In this case, failure has more chances than success is how we understand the probability connected with daily life. Bernoulli trial with connected with relation between the probability of success and probability of failure. Random variables. So let's understand the definition of random variables and also why it is essential to be included in the topic of probability. The topic itself says random variables. Now say for example, I have two fair coins are tossed. So when I toss two fair coins, then clearly I know that its sample space S is given by the possibility that the two coins, the coin one and the coin two has each heads tails and tails head on either sides of the two coins. So when I toss two coins, the possibilities are that I get a head on the coin one and tails on the coin two or I get a tails on the coin one, heads on the coin two, or I may get both as heads on coin one and coin two. And the fourth possibility is that I may get a tail in the first coin and tail out here. So these are the four possibilities when I cause two fair coins. HT, TH, HH, TT. So I have either two heads or two head tails, one head and a tail, and one a tail and a head is how we get all the four possibilities as the sample space. Now in this case, if I say if X is getting number of heads on the top surface then we define for x the different types of values based on the outcomes of the two coins that is if x is getting number of heads on the top surface then let's see how we can find the value of x for each of the outcomes hh tt ht and th so in order to find the values of x let me take the tabular form where i have the sample space here and my x here and the sample space gives the possibilities hh Totally four of the possibilities TT, HT, TH. So let's take the first outcome which has heads on each of the coins one and two. That is getting a head on coin one and getting a head even on the coin two. That is HH is the first outcome when two coins are tossed at the same time. Now, if because X is getting number of heads on the top surface, let's count the number of heads in each of the outcome and then that assigns the value of X. In case of this, the number of heads is 1 plus 1 which is 2. I have my X equal to 2. In the second case, I get tail in the coin 1 and tail in the coin 2. Therefore, the number of heads in case of tails in both the coins is 0 because I don't have heads in each of the outcome of the second case. Now coming to the third case, I get a head in coin 1 and a tail in coin 2 so that the number of heads is only this which is 1 and similarly the number of heads here is also 1 is how we define the quantity x. So the second row indicates that the value assigns the value of x
gives the number of heads of the outcome is how we understand so the value of x gives the number of heads of each outcome therefore x equal to 2 implies there are two heads in the outcome of two coins tossed out here two fair coins tossed the value is 0 x equal to 0 implies the sample space has two tails because there's no head in each of the coins x equal to 1 implies there is at least one head either in coin 1 or coin 2 which is understood through the value of x similarly x equal to 1 here implies there is one head either in coin 1 or coin 2 so with this we understand that therefore for the sample space s x equal to 0 1 2 are the values which define the given concept of number of heads and hence this is said to be the random variables that is function x takes the values 0 1 2 is how we understand for the random experiment where two fair coins are tossed so these that is x is called the random variable in such a kind of an experiment we call x as the random variable which has different values based on different outcomes of this in this case of an example where the coins the two coins are tossed together so random variable connected with an experiment for finding the probability therefore random variable is defined as a function which quantifies the events of a sample space S of random experiment zeta is how we understand the random variable in case of this example the random variables are 0 1 and 2 so different problems have different random variables based on the definition of x where in case of this i define x as number of heads getting of number of heads and every problem has its own respective definition of x and hence the values derived from that definition gives us the random variables for that particular problem but basically the random variable is defined as a function which quantifies the events of a sample space s of random experiment zeta on that particular definition of x is how we understand the random variable through the basic definition in mathematics connected with an example problem now let's give a more modified definition for the random variable as we have already defined the random variable which quantifies the events of a sample space let's define to the more meaningful mapping of sample space to the real numbers so random variable when we define through sample space s we start with let s be a sample space associated with the random experiment z 
zeta. Now with this sample space, let's see how we can define the random variable. The mapping x from sample space to set of real numbers is called a random variable. So the mapping x from s to r is called the random variable. It's also the other way of defining the random variable through the mapping x from s to r, the set of real numbers. Now let's see some properties on the random variable. Now that we have defined the random variable x as a mapping from sample space s to set of all real numbers. Now, if x is a random variable, now for a mapping x from s to r, s being the sample space and set of real numbers is considered out here, which is a random variable. If x is a random variable, that implies I have the property which says that the random variable defines the property x inverse of p of s p of r is equal to p of s so this is real numbers and this is sample space s which defines for random variable x x inverse of p of r is equal to p of s where p is the probability function which we have already discussed and this is power set of sample space s. So the random variable connects the real numbers and sample space the power set by the relation x inverse of probability function of real numbers is power set of s is how we define in connecting random variables with power sets. Now let's take a problem where it's about three coins are tossed simultaneously. That is, there are three coins, coin 1, coin 2, and coin 3. Now, they are tossed simultaneously where I may get a head, a tail, or a head, or with different possible combinations. So one of the possible combination is head with tail, tail with head, head and head head with tail, head tail, head and tail, head head and all three heads and all three tails. And I may get all three tails out here. Tail, tail, and a tail. So these are the possible combinations which I get when three coins are tossed simultaneously. So each of the sample space S here has HTT, THT, TTH, HHT, HTH, THH, H, and T is how we get all the possible combinations 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, 8 different combinations of tails and heads. Now, let me say X is the number of heads I get. 
that is getting off number of heads is x through which I can easily identify that x is in each of the attempts of the sample space I get this as all tails I get 0 and 1 one head I get 1 and 2 heads possibilities of 2 and all 3 heads is 3 which is the random variable x for each of this I get the random variables as x and the sample space as this is how we understand therefore I understand that when my x is 0 1 2 3 and my sample space is each of these combinations I get that x of 0 because x is a mapping from sample space s to the real numbers my sample space being all heads all tails one head hht hth thh is what i get then therefore i have my first x with the sample space element all heads is 3 and all tails is 0 and x of one head combination being this tree will be htt will be equal to x of tht that is equal to x of tth which is 1 and similarly I have the next three possibilities which have two heads that is x hht x of thh that is x of htth which is 2 is how we get each one of this equal to 3 0 1 and 2 being the random variables now this again derive with the in indication that if I just take x of h h h equal to 3 implies x inverse 3 will be h h h h etc so let's see how the inverse of the random variable maps into respective domain and range therefore I have x inverse of 0 is all tails and then my x inverse of 1 is either heads combined with two tails in the form of t htt tht and tth is what I get for x inverse 1 and my x inverse 2 is combination of two heads with one tail in the form of hth and thh and then I have x inverse of 3 which is nothing but all heads which I get here therefore x inverse which maps each of these into the power set indicates this is mapped to this is how we see the relation between inverse random variable and the random variable x connected through the sample space s and the random variables x in this problem being 0 1 2 3 when uh, three coins are tossed simultaneously coin 1 coin 2 coin 3 probability distribution function so let's see how do we define the probability distribution function so here let me take a random variable x let x be a random variable connected with the random experiment zeta
So x is a random variable connected with the random experiment zeta then and pb the probability function associated with the random experiment zeta. So under these conditions we say f from r to r is said to be a probability distribution function is said to be a probability distribution function is said to be a probability distribution function if f of x equals p of x less than or equal to x for all x thus so this is the basic definition of probability distribution function that is when i take a random variable x for a random experiment zeta and p is the probability function associated with that random experiment <laughs> then a mapping f from set of all real numbers to set of all real numbers is said to be a probability distribution function of x if f of x equals p less than x less than or equal to x for all x belonging to r is how we define the probability distribution function of x connected with the random variable x now let's see some properties of probability distribution function f of x which we have recently defined. So for f from r to r f of x equals p x less than or equal to x is how we define the probability distribution function through which we will define various properties. Now the first property we identify and a probability distribution function is that f of x always lies between 0 and 1 for all x belonging to R, where f of x is px less than or equal to x. Now, secondly, if x1 is less than or equal to x2, then that implies. f of x1 is less than or equal to f of x2 for all x1, x2 belonging to real numbers is how we get. Now thirdly, we have the property which is connected to the limit, limits. Now the third property is limit extending to plus infinity of f of x is 1 and limit extending to minus infinity of f of x is 0. So these are the two properties which we identify in infinite case and minus infinity case of the limits. Now the fourth property is connected with right hand limit where if I want to find limit t tending to x plus of f of t will be directly f of x is how we identify the four basic properties where this is the right hand limit of t tending to x plus of f of t will be f of x so these are the four properties identified with probability distribution function connected with each of the properties as stated here. Discrete random variable. Let's see how we define the discrete random variable. Say a mapping x from s to r is a random variable if this is 
or random variable then if range of x the random variable x is either finite or countably infinite then the random variable x is called discrete random variable is how we define the discrete random variable so the only condition for a discrete random variable is that range of x should be either finite or countably infinite is how we understand the discrete random variable from a random variable x now let's define a continuous random variable and a random variable is said to be a continuous random variable if if the random variable x takes into account all real values in the interval a b then x is called a continuous random variable is how we understand the random variable x reducing to a continuous random variable f it takes into account all the real values in the interval a open interval a b that is if i have this then this range gives all the values taken in the interval a b gives me continuous random variable now let's see some of the notations before we do the actual problems connecting to the random variables and the probability distribution of the random variable x the random variable x is generally denoted with xi with i running from 1 to 3 till n that is the variables are x1 x2 x3 x plus that is x1 x2 x3 and xn is how we denote with the random variable <coughs> Now next is probability distribution of x equals xi is said to be px equal to xi with i running from 1 2 3 till n that is each of this gives us px1, px2, and pxn. That's how we understand the two basic definitions, random variable and the probability distribution. So generally, for a probability distribution table of the given discrete random variables, we denote in this following table form. Probability distribution Probability distribution of 
a discrete random variable x equals xi is given by the table table where I take x equal to xi and p of x equals xi. Now this is x1, next is x2, next is x3 and so on and so forth till xn where each of this gives me p of x1 when x is x1 and when x is x2 it gives me p of x2 p of x3 so on and so forth till p of xn is how we denote in the probability distribution table of a discrete random variable x equals xi is given by this table of the data. Now the question is prepare a probability distribution table for the random variable x which is equal to getting of hats or x is number of hats in number when two coins are tossed when two coins are tossed simultaneously is the question out here. So let's see how we can do this problem converted into probability distribution table when two coins are tossed simultaneously. <laughs> so initially in this case let me identify first with two coins coin 1 and coin 2 with different possible combinations of h t t h etc so let zeta be the random experiment of tossing off two coins simultaneously and then let s be the sample space which is heads, tails, tail head, and head tail. This is the sample space. Now x is the random variable. Now random variable x is number of heads. Now because it's number of heads, that implies x is number of heads here is 2 for each of the event of the sample space it is 2 or this is we already know as 0 1 2 is what we get as the random variables x now using this we had to construct a probability distribution table for this random variable x and let's see how we can construct therefore my random variable set as 0 1 2 implies initially x equal to 0 implies I want to find p of x equal to 0 is how we find each of p of x equal to xi so initially with x equal to 0 probability of x equal to 0 makes us understand that is probability of 
not getting a head because x is number of heads you get in the random experiment of tossing of two coins so not getting a head is probability of this possibility where I have two tails that is out of first coin the possibility is 1 by 2 times 1 by 2 that is 1 over 4 is what we get because getting a tail out of head and tail is 1 over 2 and 1 over 2 similarly x equals 1 implies p x equal to 1 is equal to p of getting one head this is either p of ht or p of th is how we get but this is nothing but when simplified I get one head now next is the probability of getting one head is one head in first coin out of all four possibilities plus one head in the second coin or the possibility is this which gives me two by four or one by two which I get in getting this next x equal to two implies p x equal to two is probability of getting two heads which is nothing but p of two heads therefore we get one over four for probability of getting two heads that is hh which is one over four therefore using all these basic informations of p of x equal to zero x equal to one and x equal to two we are going to construct a probability distribution table using each of the random variables 0 1 and 2 now comes the construction of probability distribution table where I have my x as 0 1 2 and each of p x equal to 0 x equal to 1 and x equal to 2 were calculated in the previous session so to construct we take The table this is x and this is x equal to xi I take each of these constructed here where x is 0 1 and 2 in each of the cases and the three values which I obtain are 1 by 4 and 2 by 4 and 1 by 4 which we have obtained for each of 0 1 and 2 and this is called the probability distribution table for the problem where I toss two coins simultaneously with the random variable x being the number of heads I get when I toss the two coins simultaneously so the construction of probability distribution table is in this manner as seen in the example problem now let's see the mean and variance of a probability distribution so the mean and variance play a vital role in the probability distribution so for a discrete random variable x for a discrete random variable x the mean which is generally denoted by mu is defined with the formula sigma summation i xi px equal to xi where p is the probability and xi is each of the variable for respect to i is how we denote and my variance 
which is generally denoted by V is nothing but given by the formula sigma square is sigma and then sigma is given by summation i x i square p x equal to x i minus mu square or this also can be written as sigma x i minus mu whole square p x equal to x i. So this is how we define for mean and the variance of the given formula. This is sigma square is how we define. So the variance V is sigma square given by this and the mean mu, mu is given by this. So these two are either formulas which can be applied for variance. Now that we have defined for mean and variance, now next comes the standard deviation deviation SD is root of variance that is sigma. So here sigma is referred as the standard deviation which is obtained by the positive square root of the variance. So if I just find the positive square root of variance I get standard deviation is how we understand the difference between mean variance and standard deviation. Now let's see an example problem to understand mean variance and standard deviation for a real life problem which involves probability. So to connect mean and variance with an example problem, I have considered the example problem where the question says find the mean and standard deviation when a cubical die is rolled is how we understand the question. So in this case initially I identify the random variable which is very important. Now as we know that a cubical die has all its surfaces which are flat with certain numbers out there on each of its face. There are six faces and hence six numbers and hence the sample space is each of the face which we have out here. And the event is rolling a cubical die which is this which has the sample space running from 1 to 6. Now let the random variable x be the number obtained on the top surface of the die. So whatever number is obtained on the top surface of the die that is considered as the random variable x. Now with this we know that the possibilities are xi can be each of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6. It can be either 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6 which can come on the top surface when a die is rolled. Therefore, the random variables can be at the most running from 1 to 6. Now with this information, we understand that px equal to xi in each of this case the probability of getting a number on the top surface whether it is pxi equal to 1 or px equal to 2 or 3 is that when I want to get a number on the top surface then my event is 1 over 6. So out of 6 numbers 1 on the top is 1. So n of e is 1 and n of s is 6. Therefore my probability of each of the event is 1 over 6. So with this basic information, I'll construct the probability distribution table and then we get the solution. 
Now let's construct a probability distribution table for the given information where I have a table here where initially I have x equal to xi and next p of x equals xi then this is 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so we know that all the variables are running from 1 2 3 4 5 6 on the top surface then each of the probability is of getting 1 is 1 by 6 and this is 1 by 6 1 by 6 is how we get the probability of each time a die is rolled we get a number on the top surface is 1 over 6 and hence we get this out here so initially to find mean we know that mean mu is given by sigma i running from 1 to 6 because 1 2 3 4 5 6 and then xi px equal to xi then each of i equal to 1 gives me x1 px equal to x1 therefore this is obtained by multiplying 1 times 1 by 6 plus 2 times 1 by 6 plus 3 times 1 by 6 plus 4 times 1 by 6 plus 5 times plus 6 times 1 by 6 is how we get now this on further simplification gives us mu equals 1 by 6 which is common here of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 this on simplification gives 11 15 18 19 20 21 over 6 this is 3 twos, 3 sevens, which is 3.5. Therefore, mean mu is said to be 3.5 for the given problem. Is how we understand finding the mean for the given probability distribution table. Similarly, let's see how we can find the variance or the standard deviation of the given problem. Next, to find variance using the formula, so now in order to find variance, we have the formula variance is sigma i running from 1 to 6 of xi minus mu whole square px equal to xi or you have this also in the form sigma i running from 1 to 6 xi square px equal to xi minus mu square so we can use either of the formula to obtain the variance where i will i'll use the formula number two for finding the variance so in this case the variance is sigma i running from 1 to 6 of xi square px equal to xi minus mu square for which I find each of xi connected with this. Therefore, for i equal to 1, I get xi square that is 1 square times of 1 by 6 plus 2 square times of 1 by 6 plus 3 square times 1 by 6 next is 4 square times 1 by 6 plus 5 square times 1 by 6 plus 6 square times 1 by 6 minus mu square we have already calculated the mu which is mean is 3.5 so here the mean is 3.5 
which I'm going to substitute in place of mu. So because mu is 3.5, I substitute here as 3.5 whole square. Now next, I take 1 by 6 common, then I get 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square plus 4 square plus 5 square plus 6 square minus this. So this on simplification gives me the answer. Now this is sigma n square. So when I add, I get n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1 So this on further simplification gives the answer. So this on simplification gives me 35 over 12, which is that implies variance, which is also denoted by sigma square is 35 over 12 is how we understand the variance connected with the probability distribution table. Now, how do we find standard deviation from variance? is the next task. Now next, to find the standard deviation using the variance. To find standard deviation, we have the variance which is 35 over 12. Now with this variance, we know that standard deviation is positive square root of v. Therefore, standard deviation sigma is nothing but square root of 35 over 12. Now this on simplification through a calculator gives us the standard deviation of the given probability distribution table. Now let's see the other type of distribution called the binomial distribution. What is a binomial distribution and how is that different from probability distribution is how we are going to differentiate when we learn about binomial distribution. So a binomial distribution is generally said to be in the form of p plus q whole power n where p is probability of success and q is probability of failure. And n is number of trials, the number of times I toss a coin or the number of times I roll a die, etc. So with these conditions, we have the binomial distribution which is given by p plus q whole power n where p is probability of success and q is probability of failure. And because of this, we have p plus q is 1 because probability of success plus probability of failure is 1. So using this, we have the binomial distribution p plus q whole power n. And note, because p can be indirectly or q can be indirectly expressed in the form of p, therefore, we have all the parameters which are n and p in the binomial distribution. The parameters identified are n and p, where q is again the parameter expressed in the form of p. So here, note, n and p are said to be the parameters of the binomial distribution. So if I take the binomial distribution, n and p are said to be the parameters of the binomial distribution. If x is a binomial variate, then let's see how we can find the probability distribution table using the probability of that binomial variate. If x is a binomial variate
with parameters n and p then px equals x is given by the probability formula as ncx p power x q power n minus x where x belongs to this as how we understand the probability connected with binomial distribution and here it is very important to note that p is a value which lies between 0 and 1 is how we understand the formula for binomial variate x and note x is a discrete random variable is how we also refer for the binomial variate with parameters n and p. Now it is also very important to see that if I say that x is a binomial variate with parameters n and p then I denote that with x from b and p is how I make the notation for the statement x is a binomial variate with parameters n and p implies x is a binomial variate with parameters n and p is the notation for the statement. So in every problem I denote this, I clearly in understand that x is a binomial variate with the parameters n and p obviously. So using this, let's see how we can construct the binomial distribution table using the basic formula. So as we have discussed for x being a binomial variate with parameters n and p, we had the formula which says px equal to x is ncx p power x q power n minus x where x belongs to 0, 1, 2, so on and so forth till n. Using this formula for px equal to x, let's see how we can construct a binomial distribution table. Say for example, I have initially x equal to x and px equal to x. Then let me start with x starting from 0, 1, 2, 3. So 0, 1, 2, so on and so forth. and that's how we understand. So in this case when I take x equal to 0 I have nc0 p power 0 and q power n minus 0 and when x equals 1 then I have nc1 p power n minus 1 p power 1 q power n minus 1 and for x equal to 2 I have this nc2 so therefore for x equal to 2 I have nc2 p square q power n minus 2 and so on and so forth for x equal to n I have nc n p power n q power n minus n but this on simplification gives me p power n and this on simplification gives me Q power n is how we understand the basic definition of the binomial distribution table constructed from the formula px equal to x equals ncx p power x q power n minus x. So this is binomial distribution table. Now if I have a binomial distribution 
with a random variable x as a binomial variate then for this I have the mean which is denoted by mu is NP where n is number of trials and p is probability of success is given by mu is NP and my variance which is denoted by sigma square is given by the formula NPQ. So mean is NP and variance is NPQ and therefore the standard deviation sigma is root of NPQ because we know that standard deviation is root of variance which is NPQ. My standard deviation sigma is given by root of NPQ. Mean, variance and standard deviation for the binomial distribution. Q plus P whole power N where N is number of trials, P is probability of success and Q is probability of failure. Connecting with Q equals 1 minus P is how we understand the mean and variance in a binomial distribution. Now let's discuss about the third type of distribution called the Poisson distribution. Now that we have discussed about probability distribution, the binomial distribution and finally the third distribution called the Poisson distribution. For a Poisson distribution, with a poison random variable x we have the formula px equal to x is e power minus lambda into lambda power x by x factorial where x belong of this is how we get it goes on and on but this is not finite here lambda is said to be the parameter for x Lambda is the parameter for x and px equal to x is given by e power minus lambda, lambda power x by x factorial, which is the probability for the Poisson distribution. Now we have discussed about probability distribution px equal to x, which is given by e power minus lambda, lambda power x by x factorial for x belonging to 0, 1, 2 till infinity. It is not finite. So in this case, the construction of the table is as follows. Suppose I have initially x equal to x and px equal to x initially to start with x equal to 0 then 1 and 2 and so forth till n. Let's see for x equal to 0 what will I get? e power minus lambda lambda power 0 by 0 factorial which is e power minus lambda. So when x equal to 1 I get e power minus lambda by lambda of 1 factorial then this is e power minus lambda lambda squared by 2 factorial and e power minus lambda and this goes on and off because this is never going to end with finite n and hence the whole of the distribution goes infinite so here I need to make a note that 
n is infinite whereas in binomial distribution the number of trials is finite therefore in binomial distribution n is finite in poison distribution n is infinite is how we understand the concept now let's discuss the mean and variance of a binomial distribution so in order to find this we consider for a poison variate x with parameter lambda we have mean mu is given by lambda the parameter lambda and variance denoted by sigma square is also given by lambda is how we understand the concept of mean and variance which are parameter lambda for the poison distribution and to make a note standard deviation is root of variance that implies the positive square root of lambda where lambda is always greater than zero is very important note we make in case of the parameter lambda since lambda is greater than zero the mean is this variance is this and standard deviation is positive square root of lambda because lambda is greater than zero is how we understand the poison variate connected with mean and variance